Interacting with fellow fans of something is fun because everyone has their odd favorites, their problematic faves, everyone feels strongly about different characters. There's always at least one person who likes the most obscure or terrible of guys, but what if I were to tell you that there was a character so hated so mean and disliked that not a single soul likes them. Disclaimer, I'm sure there is at least one person in existence that likes Wolbrin. Statistically speaking, it is a guarantee. Um, so if you are that single person, I'm sorry. Wolbrin Bongle, the most hated character of all time. I have never in my life seen a community come together like this before in regards to a fictional character. Diss tracks, think pieces, I've not seen an ounce of love for Wolbrin Bongle. And I would say for good reason, but we've all seen characters who are objectively worse be loved and adored by fans. But why does everyone hate Wolbrin Bongle so much? Is it all a joke, is it a meme, or is there a level of genuine dislike here? I think to understand why we hate Wilbrin Bongle so much, we first have to understand the one person who actually loves him. His best friend, or more depending on how much you want to read into this, Barkus Root. Out of this duo, Barkus is the one that we typically meet first, and that may be a factor into why most of us side with him and not Wolbrin. I'll be real, my first playthrough I accidentally sent Barkus flying and therefore I met Wolbrin later without any prior knowledge or context, and I honestly didn't mind him that much at first. So Barkus, if you're smart, you can save him from the windmill in the Blighted Village in Act 1 and actually get to meet him. He's a bit standoffish, but he is expecting you to exploit him because that's how this generally works. If you're playing good and you don't push for a reward or anything, he is genuinely bewildered. He can't believe that you did something nice for the sake of helping others and just being nice. There is a lot that you can get from this encounter. In a way, Barkus is a bit like Astarian. He's not used to seeing the good that humanity has to offer. He's not used to asking for help and being met with, well, help. He doesn't actually say that, but <laughs> it can be implied, at least in terms of Barkus's interactions with strangers. Barkus expects exploitation because that's what he is used to. Barkus is a bit of a nervous guy, but that may just be because he's not so sure about you. If you demand payment, he'll give you what you want, and with a bit of a hmm, I knew that's how you'd be attitude, you proved him right, essentially. Barkus is a little pathetic, <laughs> but it's in the endearing kind of way. He's, he's just a little guy, you know, and I'm not just saying little guy because he's a gnome. <laughs> I've realized what I said as I said it. Um, anyway, Barkus will share with you that he is searching for a dear friend who has gone missing. His only clue, an amulet that belonged to Wolbrin, left behind, covered in blood. It's clear that Barkus cares a lot about this Wolbrin guy, so much so that he is risking his life to find out what happened to him. After this first encounter with Barkus, he leaves you and you do not see him again until the Grimforge later in Act 1 in the Underdark, where he's been captured as a slave. The Absolute Cult is taking in deep gnome slaves and honestly slaves of any type, and it is up to us to save Barkus and the others, which basically just means killing everyone or siding with the rebellion against Nier and then convincing the leftover Dwegar to let the slaves go afterwards. After saving him though, Barkus will tell you more about Wolbrin, namely his name and that he's been captured and taken to Moonrise Towers. If you have saved Halson at this point or sided with Minthara, you've already heard a bit about Moonrise Towers and that is where you are headed next. You can convince Barkus to travel with you at your camp at this point, but he is not a full companion. He's not a companion at all. He's just hanging out. If you have not done the tiefling party yet and go back to do the party with Barkus, you actually 
get to hang out with him a little bit, and you can convince him to set off fireworks, which is pretty cool. There. Celebration. Barkus is really endearing, and he's a pretty decent guy, just trying his best to help his friend. He gets into trouble, but is humble enough to accept your help and not feel entitled to it. A bit of a difference between Barkus and Wolbrin, if you ask me. At this point, Barkus is basically just chilling. You can take him to Last Light or meet him there if he wasn't traveling with your camp, and he is depending on you to find and help Wolbrin wherever he might be, whatever might have happened to him. And this leads us to actually going to Moonrise Towers, where we can meet Wolbrin Bongle. He is very distrusting towards us, a bit abrasive and kind of an asshole, but he is being held prisoner at Moonrise Towers and to him, we are a bit suspicious. I can't blame him though. However, Wolbrin is quick to work with you once you prove that you're not like the other true souls or if you let him know that you're rocking with the tieflings, if the tieflings are had survived to act two in your game <laughs> and wilbrin does honor his word on getting the tieflings out as well which you know what that's the whole reason i'm here <laughs> so in my books so far so good but i think the turning point for most of us was seeing how wilbrin acts after arriving at last light in when you walk up to him he acts as if you only exist to serve him saying he doesn't need any more help and trying to brush you off there's an air of entitlement to him that is infuriating to deal with. But on top of that, Wilburn seems to be very dismissive and rude both to you and Barkus, his best friend, his potential lover, whatever you want to read into their dynamic. They were really close, or at least Barkus thought they were close. And we can't stand for Barkus being mistreated by Wilburn here. Wilbrin is too preoccupied with planning something. He is the leader of the Iron Hand Gnomes, and he's got beef with the Gondians, blaming them for why the Iron Hands were casted out of Baldur's Gate. He will later ask that you help him in Baldur's Gate with his quest of avenging the Iron Hand Gnomes, reinstating themselves as important people to know throughout the city. And that's pretty much it until Act 3, where Ro Wilburn will ask you to commit terrorism and genocide. If you're not siding with Gortash, you need to find a way to disable the Steel Watch, and Wilburn Bongle is providing you a way to do so. Sneak into the foundry where the Steel Watch are made and controlled from, and blow it up with a bomb that Wilburn provides you. But he is also pretty on board with the idea of the Gondian slaves inside being casualties. It's actually a part of his plan. Wolbrin is unfairly prejudiced against the Gondians. He blames them for being slaves, saying that as a group, the Gondians are too smart and too submissive. Wolbrin believes that this group needs to die to make things right, because even though they are enslaved by Gortash. It's their fault for being enslaved and they're too smart for how submissive they are because it's their intelligence that has brought the Steel Watch to Baldur's Gate is what Wolbrin says. And that is a, a wild thing to say and believe about a group of people that are victims in all of this being enslaved against their will. <laughs> and if you do have a heart and save the Gondians, Wilburn will be really, really mad about it. Not a great look for him. He'll want to kill the Gondians himself and you can either fight against him or intimidate him into standing down. Or you could convince Barkus to take the lead instead. Barkus actually warns you prior to not help Wilburn commit terrorism and genocide. Barkus is not on board with blowing up the foundry and killing all the Gondians. Barkus knows that Wilbrid is going too far and that this is wrong. So here we have the person who is supposed to be the closest to Wilbrin, the, the most understanding, maybe even empathetic, is outright telling us like, hey man, this guy is going too far. This guy is in the wrong. So after all that, it does make sense that the vast majority of players do not like Wolbrin. He's self-centered, self-serving, an asshole. He's an Iron Hand supremacist and is advocating for an entire clan of gnomes to be eradicated. But most importantly, he's mean to a character that a lot of us like. We're all rocking with Barkus. 
<laughs> so it sucks to see him be mistreated by Wolbrin, especially after we've witnessed the atrocities Barkus has had to suffer in order to find and save Wolbrin. So, there is a genuine reason to dislike this character. But I do believe a lot of the Wolbrin hate has been exaggerated because it's fun. It's a bit of a meme, it's fun and unifying and that's great. And if you haven't spent a lot of time in fandom or online communities, these unifying jokes or events are kind of what fandom is all about. Sometimes they feel rare, but when unifying things like this, like hating Wolbrin, happen, it is genuinely such a good time that usually doesn't even have discourse about it. So like, there's, there's no downside. <laughs> We're all just vibing and finding ways to hate on this one little asshole. There's no debate on if Wolbrin is a bad person, there's no debate on if it's valid to hate him. We're all united on hating Wolbrin Bongle. If Wolbrin has a hundred haters, I'm one of them. If he has one hater, it's me. <laughs> if he has zero haters, I am dead. Stand my man Barkus Root. <laughs> if we should meet again, well... We will have met again. Hmm. This is a little bit sillier of a video. I just think it's really funny that everyone hates Wolbrin so much. And I think it's really funny how I was pretty neutral about Wolbrin until I did a playthrough where I actually was able to take Barkus all the way to Act 3. And I do have to recognize within myself part of why I so strongly hate Wolbrin is because of the vibe and the joke. I didn't care all that much about him until I saw all these memes about hating him, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, he is the worst. I do hate Wilburn Bongle. So, part joke, part seriousness. We all hate Wilburn, and I think that's beautiful. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching me talk about Wilburn Bongle and Barkus Root for like 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I will see you all in the next one. Lazel video coming soon, and for people who keep asking about Minthara, I am doing an evil run where I'm romancing her, potentially. Um, I haven't decided if I'm romancing her yet or not, but I am getting to know her. So Minthara is coming soon, I just have to actually, like, play through her story first. <laughs> but I do want to talk about her, because I, I like her a lot so far. Um, anyway, that's it for me, for real, for real. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye!